today we have what you know when i when i think of casting directors you know i always see a top 10 list and this name is always on that list um she is a wonderful woman that i met oh gosh i don't know several years ago and she's so real so from the heart uh she has cast projects like sabrina the teenage witch it came from outer space wilfred uh she is dory zuckerman dory zuckerman hey david zimmerman <laughs> uh, I, how are you good you, you could be my brother i have a brother named david and our last names are very similar it's a good name david <laughs> he says too and and z i love you know it starts with z we got the z I can't wait till we can go out to dinner again and have a burger or something. I know, I miss Hugo's. I know, I do too. So, you know, I was like reading up on you and I knew stuff, but I didn't even know you grew up in the Bay Area. Yeah, I'm from the Bay Area. Um, and both my brother and I, when we were um, 10 and eight started going to the american conservatory theater and the young conservatory we were studying acting right we were part of the first group of young conservatory people at ect and we were there for about seven years and uh it's fun to see um people that we grew up with mm -hmm. you know one runs in the an improv group there's ones that are successful actors became film executives and, you know, the people I watched across the street that were in the conservatory at the time were like Denzel Washington and Michael Lerner and Harry Hamlin and uh, Robert Donut and, you know, really yeah. just magnificent actors. So when I became a casting director, I went out of my way to call in these actors I grew up watching on stage and they became friends and I got to hire them. So, the, you know, uh, full circle. Full circle. It's fun to, well, you know, I grew up in the Bay Area, San Mateo, and- uh, Oh, that's where my cousins were, yeah. Ah! Yeah, and I went to, I went to San Francisco State, and then I went to the Summer Congress at ACT, so I loved it there. Ah, when were you there? Well, I didn't go, I went in 91 to ACT. Yeah, we were there in the 70s. We took the Greyhound bus. It was, oh! before, it was before BART. <laughs> the Greyhound bus. I remember. I did that once to Reno, and that was it. Yeah. <laughs> I like the train. You know, taking the train. Never did the train. Oh. Um, now, I also read, you know, going back just a little, that you were actually born on the stage. Yeah, literally. I was under my mother's hoop skirt and Pirates of the Penzance. My parents were the founders um, of the Diabolite Opera Company that now is called uh, Diablo, I don't know what they renamed it, but it, they are the biggest um, light opera company in the Bay Area in Walnut Creek. They built the theater, uh, but they used to perform at, uh, um, uh, one of the high school's stages, that's where it started. And then they built um, the the stage and then it got rebuilt and it's this beautiful uh, building now and with professional everything about it. So it was like, literally we grew up on the stage, me and my brother and my sister, we were all born during different shows, but I was the only one that interrupted my mother during the uh, second <laughs> act, which she sh still holds against me. Uh, oh no. <laughs> no my whole god. life she held it against me oh my god i you know what i pictured did you see that oh what was that film where the woman the mother's washing dishes and all of a sudden the baby drops out i forgot what comedy that was um, yeah that's that's pretty much it yeah <laughs> i can imagine she's like singing a song and you come on out <laughs> yeah it's like at least i waited for intermission to start you know and I guess the, uh, I guess she didn't go up for the second act. 
through. <laughs> I love that. I love that to be born on stage. Now, when did you actually realize that you, I'm not going to act, I'm going to cast? Oh, I, you know, I, I got a lot of performing um, scholarships from high school. I was always the one that, you know, I got the leads. Um, in high school, I kind of uh, was starting to flip over to um, dance and directing. So they, um, you know, I, I literally got the dance department. They turned over their department uh, to me in my senior year because the dance teacher took off a year. And so I got to put on the show and I just, I really liked that, but I never was confident enough to be, I, I didn't like acting. I, it made me too nervous. I, you know, I was on the um, debate team. Um, me and Adam Schiff were on the debate team together, you know, so there was that intimidation starting right then and there. <laughs> um, and um, I went to college and uh, for it. And then when I transferred down to Cal State Northridge, yeah. I realized I, I just, I didn't, I didn't have that gene. I didn't have that angst. I didn't have that drive to be in front of the camera or on stage. I wanted to be behind it. I wanted to help others get up on stage or get in front of the camera. Right. So um, I learned production. And then my first real job was at William Morris and um, I was an agent's assistant and then I became a publicist right a actor's babysitter that's what they are <laughs> and um, and then I, I I got into casting and I really liked it because I got to be around people that I admired and I and I could see their process in front of the camera. They weren't nervous, they loved it. And I didn't have that. So it was, I knew my thing was to be, to help actors not be, in a, be one. Right, now, do, but don't you think it's good to have some kind of nerves or something? Yeah, but excited nerves instead of, I wanna kill myself nerves. Right. You know, right. so there's a, you know, there's a different kind of excitement. I did not, um, I, I took, when I came down to LA, I took some acting classes. I didn't get the whole, let the liquid run through your arms and feel like a tree and all of that stuff just sounded ridiculous to me. Yeah. So I was like, I, I just could not um, adopt the process of being an actor. So well, like, let everybody adopt what they need to adopt and I'll see if they're good enough. Thank God for us, because you became a casting director, and, and that is your, your glow, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a kind of a thankless um, profession, because, uh, the, you know, nobody wanted us. We didn't become a union. We couldn't even become a union. The only people that wanted us so we could have health insurance was the Teamsters, and that was... Um, so we became Teamsters along with drivers and location managers. Producers, the Producer Guild thought that we're managers. Uh, Directors Guild didn't think we should, you know, that we were, it, it's weird. Out of all the jobs on film and TV, uh, casting from uh, um, the people above casting just don't see it as, vital as it is they, uh, you know that's why you see a lot of directors and actors thanking you know the directors for putting in the show and it's like you know they didn't know who you were before i pushed them on you do you so you know we're all a little bitter which helps but um it's uh it's it's a it's a hard business it's actors appreciate it i guess in the moment and afterwards whatever and i'm not looking for like oh my god Thank you very much. But it, there's a certain, it, the fact that we don't even have a category in the Oscars is- Yeah, that never m made sense to me. Yeah. And, and, and oh. And the head of the Academy now, David Rubin, is a casting director. So maybe that'll change, who knows? Maybe, right? Yeah. It, doesn't it seem though that, let's say, when actors don't get the role, 
they blame, it's like, oh, the casting director and this and that. But ultimately, as we know, the casting director doesn't have the final say. Uh, yeah, most of the time we do not have the final say. No. Uh, sometimes they'll trust you enough to just put a couple of people in front of you, but it's your job to see as many people as possible to kind of help the director and producers see a different way to um, possibly go when it comes to ethnicities and, and disabilities to see, you know what, this role doesn't have to be uh, white man 40, mm -hmm. you know, unless he has to be a gymnast, you know, it, it's just, um, you can change roles to female, you know, so casting, it's, it's, if, if you've been around long enough, yeah. you're more confident and more able to steer, uh, people the other way. There's so many, you know, coming up new, you just do what you're told, but once you're, You've been around for years you're able to have more influence um as to the casting so right that well we have you know i could keep on just hanging out with you but we have a few um students here i think oh we have do we have six we have six students from performing arts studio west and they have some questions to ask um Hi guys. Yes, yes, we have uh, Jode Garsha, we have uh, Zuli, uh, we have Nick Brode, uh, and then we have Raquel Chavez and Matthew Payne, and uh, gosh, let's see, Ashanti, Ashanti's there. So uh, everyone, Dory Zuckerman. Hi guys. Hi. 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 How nice are you? See you? Nice to see you. You too. You too. Let's see. I'm trying to get everybody's video working here. Let's see, Matthew, I'm going to get you. And then Nick, I'm going to get you to start your video. And then we'll all be on. There we go. So we have some questions here. We could start with Ashante asking Dory Zucker. Um. What would it like being the only girl in the family? The only girl where? I couldn't hear you. What would it like being the only girl in your family? Oh, in the family? Um, I actually have a younger sister that wants nothing to do with show business. And um, she was she's nine years younger. Um, so uh, luckily, I wasn't. I, <laughs> but, uh, um, I was the oldest, which I think is the hardest. It's hard. It's really hard to be the oldest because you're first with everything, and yeah. the second, and then the second person, the second sibling gets half the amount of uh, helicoptering from parent, mm -hmm. and then the third one is like you know you're on your own. So, um, right. I, I think it's harder. <laughs> Are you the only girl? No, I'm the oldest of five. Yeah, well, see, I we're the same. We're, we're the <laughs> oldest. We we they did everything to us. <laughs> <laughs> I like that question. I like these, like you know, what kind of what's your favorite food? Mm. <laughs> kind of thing, ice cream. Um, Zuli Johnson. Yes, I have a question. What is first to cast your 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 for casting a character? Well, you first have to read the script and um, and then you send the script to breakdown services and they break down the character and then you go over it with the writer or director and just say, okay, this is what they think the age is. Can we open it up or do we tighten it up? Can it be male or female? Can it be any ethnicity? Um, you know, what are the 
perimeters of a character. And um, a lot of times when I read a script at this point, every time I read a script, someone's voice will pop into my head as a prototype. So that helps. Um, but uh, yeah, you, have, you, you try to keep it as wide as possible. Mm. Thank what, you. What was one of your most proudest casting jobs that you, you've done? Well, I just, just this past year, I've done two documentaries on Pretty Woman because that mm -hmm. was my um, first yeah. job. And um, the casting director, I came in as the associate and she ended up leaving before we started filming and there was only five roles cast. So I was casting a hundred more roles, like between takes, I would show up on the set with about four or five actors and between takes, me and Gary Marshall would audition them in the bushes. <laughs> we would turn around <laughs> in action and then everyone would Cross the street and during Pretty Woman, blah, 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 cut. All right, next. And someone would audition, and then we'd figure out who to send a wardrobe because that's how Pretty Woman was made. We just did it as mm -hmm. it was day to day. We didn't know what was going to happen. Oh my mm -hmm. God. God, what a, that's an amazing story. Yeah, that's, I mean, and it's such a classic film. Yeah, so they've done two documentaries, uh, one on Reels Channel. And then I just did one for the uh, Netflix special on Pretty Woman. Right. And uh, because Pretty Woman, no, you know, that people have heard all the stories. We, were, we really didn't have a script when we started either. So we just never knew what was needed. You know, I would, Gary would go, I think we need a senator tomorrow. I'm like, <laughs> already. So I'd have to call agents at night and find out who was available and get them to a trailer in the morning. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, all right, Raquel Chavez. Me. Hi. Hi. I had a question. How did you start to be a casting director? Um, I, well, my first experience in casting, I was in college and I did an internship at MTM Studios, Mary Tyler Moore Studios on Radford. It's now CBS Radford. And I got to work in the casting office for Hill Street Blues, the Bob Newhart Show, um, uh, Remington Steel, and St. Elsewhere. You guys are all too young to remember any of them. And, um, except David. David remembers them all. <laughs> every um, single one and every one. single one of them. And <laughs> um, you know, and I was I would just see the process of what was going on and I then I went back to college and uh, and then a few years later one of the assistants, Debbie Borilski, became a casting director and she called me and she says, Do you want to talk to me about being my assistant on a new CBS show called Frank's Place with Tim Reed? And Hugh Wilson created it. And I said, yeah. So that was my first uh, casting job. And um, I, I really loved it. it was, it's so fascinating to see these actors come in and I, you know, you, you get to help actors instead of worrying about being one. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Um, Jode Garsha. Hi. Uh, um. Um, my question is, uh, out of all the cast, the, uh, all, all the projects you worked on, which one inspired you and, uh, which one would, would you say is your best work? Probably my last series, Wilfred, with Elijah Wood, because yeah. I basically, only I, I could only pay anyone's scale so I couldn't really I had to rely on the parts being good enough and um, and getting some really big names I got Robin Williams and uh, Rudger Hauer wow, I'm just naming dead people right now Rudger Hauer and um, and uh, uh, all, I can't even think of all, all the people, but it was uh, Mary Steenburgen, uh, 
it was a really fun show to work on because the scripts were really challenging and they were open for any kind of person. Plus my brother was the showrunner, so it was easy to shorthand with him mm. when, you know, because I'm his big sister, so I could <laughs> argue with him when behind the closed door. But we really were on the same page because he grew up um, going to ACT. We both had the same background. So we both had the, it was, it was the most fun. And um, wow. It must be so nice to have your brother in the same industry and so close. Yeah, I actually got him into the business, and he's done much better than I have. But um, you know, he uh, he co-created a Family Guy, so um, mm. yeah, that's my brother. So uh, you know, he's a very good writer. Yeah. Thanksgiving is always entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I bet you see some of your family in Family Guy sometimes. Well, actually, he put um, my ex-sister-in-law's parents, they were cartoons. They, they became two characters on an episode of Family Guy. It was very cute. Oh, that's cool. Does he still do it? Like... Like in the part of your job creating stuff for Family Guy, like in that action. No, he he just did the first couple of seasons, but his name is on it forever. And okay. when it says developed by, it says Seth McFarland and David Zuckerman. That's my brother. Okay. <laughs> wait, what, what, wait, what's the difference between a co-writer and then a, a regular writer? Well, the way um, TV and film are different. Um, so on a TV show, the executive producer is, and show run, is usually the showrunner, who is usually the head writer. And then you have all the other writers um, under you. And they, uh, before the, series, before the uh, season starts, they decide what every episode's gonna be about and each um, writer is assigned an episode, and then the showrunner takes the script and rewrites it so it comes from what, the same voice mm. every time. So, um, and in feature films, um, it's the first person who wrote the script. Someone can, like Pretty Woman, J.F. Uh, um, Lawton gets the credit for writing it, literally, I think there's less than 10 lines that he wrote in the original script, still in that script. Mm. Wow. Wow. I remember when I was, had my one line on Meet the Fockers, uh, that <laughs> they went through many different um, uh, screenwriters. Yeah, film is like, you never really know who wrote the film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Matthew Payne. Thank you. Yes. Uh, do you think that casting directors are more open to people with various handicaps now? I think they always were. And it's um, something that um, that they have to talk uh, producers through. Um, because a lot of them worry about timing or um, if there's a certain movement. Um, uh, I, I did a, a CBS show, I can't remember what it was called, mm. but they hired off a tape this actress who had a disability with walking. I did not realize they were gonna shoot her in heels walking down pebble stones, which she was not gonna be able to do. And they went, why why did we do this and it's like well then shoot it differently mm. oh she was the best one for the role so shoot it differently so you don't get the shot of the high heels or get someone else wearing the high heels shoot from the waist down and then cut it so um i think people are are more i think they're more willing at this point right now being um, 
a white male or and a uh, or female in perfect con you know perfect condition nobody's looking for they're looking for diversity right now and in, in almost everything that's out there right now yeah yeah i think this is uh the the gates are really opening right now it feels like at least yeah um uh, uh yes mr brode nick brode are there different types of casting directors do they have specialties well not to sound snobby, but um, reality TV, sh uh, TV casting directors, we don't really consider casting directors. Um, you know, they don't get to cross over as much as they'd like to. Um, some people are just TV, have never done film. I, you know, I was lucky. I just did both TV and film. Yeah. And, and, um, I, and it was depending on working somewhat. I did a series with the uh, South Park guys yeah. called That's My Bush, and it was a sitcom of George Bush family in the White House that always had a hidden meaning in it, and then 9-11 happened, and the show was canceled immediately. Oh. It was like, I saw everyone on the show said, oh, 9-11, we're in shock, and then we all went, we're also out of a job. Uh, but, um, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, a lot, a lot of people, some are strictly feature. Depend. I, I I guess you can. Um, it depends who calls you. <laughs> you yeah. know, we get called for jobs. Well, what do you prefer? Do you prefer film or TV or both or? It depends on who the bosses are. Ah. Uh, yeah. Do I want to work for with them for six months or do I want to just get this over with in five weeks? Yeah. For feature. Yeah. Can you, I tell, um... can you tell I'm old and bitter at this point? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, I'll throw this question out. What What do you uh, tell an actor who's just moving to LA? Go home. <laughs> <laughs> Go back. Do you have a return ticket? Is it round trip? <laughs> um, it's It's so crazy here because it's impossible to get an agent. It's impossible. Mm. I have actor friends who have more credits than most you can't get agents or managers uh, that, are, that are at a different level than where they are, where they should be. It might be because of their age or um, whatever, but it's, uh, it's really, really difficult. In the old days, it was, a, it was a lot easier. It's gotten much harder in the last, since everything became on computer and you put yourself on tape, this and that, whatever, there's more of everything. There's, uh, which is good and bad news. There's YouTube, there's Instagram, there's, uh, there's all these places that they're doing shows other than just TV and film, which is where I started. So, um, well, people are creating their own content, which then there are people sitting in agencies and studios watching all these shows and people are getting series off of their YouTube channel. So, you know, the good news and bad news. Yeah, I, you know, I w went to one of the, uh, um, uh, when they were showing a film at, at, at SAG and Edward Norton was there. And one of the questions was uh, about how do you get an agent? And he said, you know, the craziest thing, I'm Edward Norton. I had a really good friend who's a great actor and my agent wouldn't take him. So exactly what you say. It's like even people who are working a lot can't even get people in the door. Yeah. It's, it, well, agents have become very, very lazy. They used to come to your office. You used to have to walk around with eight by tens. They would come to your office and throw all these pictures on your desk and say, this one can do this, this one's this, you need to meet this one, la, 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 la. No one does that anymore. It's all email and texts. Nobody picks up the phone and pitches. It's a completely different animal. So you prefer the online, I mean, when people come in to audition for you, you don't really prefer Yeah, the but that's never gonna happen again. Yeah. It's all gonna be online. So now what are they doing? There's all these classes on how to uh, 
do self tapes and and light the room and use their equipment and you know that's right. basically how audition I, I know a lot of casting directors say i will never meet an actor again in person yeah. and thank god we'll never have to worry about handshaking anymore <laughs> i um, never really liked handshaking yeah and, and people might think that's rude but you shake one person's hand who just dropped off their sick child at the garden and then you're screwed. yeah 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 that's and they, that used to be a question too about you know a lot of people would go up and shake your hand it's like no you know you know you could be nice but you don't have to go up and kiss them <laughs> um, Bahara. oh one second uh, joe let's do Bahara. oh sorry it's okay we'll we'll we have time for a couple more hi david hi Bahara. uh becoming a casting director what are the steps to become one. Oh, Missed the last part, what? Oh, you said becoming a casting director. I know Bahara is very interested in becoming a casting director. Um, so what, what would you suggest for her? I, I know that we had mentioned about what are the steps to become one. Yeah, well, um, yeah, it, and, and be, getting into casting is becoming as hard as anything e uh, as well because Casting directors need experienced assistants, but the, the best thing is trying to get an assistant job, which we will require you to be able to operate, to really know computers and know the programs that are attached to breakdown services and all the recording and uploading of the, of the videos and putting them on the link for the producers and setting up auditions. And now everything's just done on the computer. So you really have to know all the programs before you even get near a casting office and then you know and that's and that's where you start as an assistant and learning all the just the gritty paperwork um before you get to sit in the room and um cast you know what i really miss i mean not that i cast a lot just a few few things but whether i cast or whether i act or whatever i'm doing I like connecting with people. Um, uh, yeah, and, it's, really, it's gonna be a different thing because a lot of people are much better in the room than they are on the video. Right, right. I don't know, it's, it's I don't know. We're a all, whole we're all new born. world. <laughs> a whole new world. Sing it, David, sing it. La, 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 everybody. <laughs> a whole new world. <laughs> a whole new I, I hope we don't have to pay Disney now. <laughs> uh oh. Did you sing more than eight notes? No, so we're good. Um, I have another question, David. Sure, I want to be sure. Did everybody get their first question yet? Yeah. Okay, yes. Um, yes. Uh, Shante. Oh, uh, with the pandemic going on, with the pandemic going on right now, how is the casting? Like, how are you guys working with the pandemic right now? The only, well, the, the, the few shows that are going on are being cast all online. People are uh, being submitted, you get submitted online by your agents or, or you can join. The, the one thing you can do for yourself if you don't have an agent is join Actors Access from breakdown services. And then you will get, you will see the breakdowns um, that casting allows actors access to see as well. And then you could submit online just like anybody else. It won't matter whether you have an agent or not. Also backstage West, I would uh, uh, keep an eye on too for roles. Yeah. But everything's gonna be submitted online. And you know what's good actually about everyone here is everyone here has an agent uh, at Performing Arts Studio West, um, which is great. And uh, awesome. everybody gets submitted. Um, David, I have a, well, not really a question. I, I feel like I feel like people have to be a little optimistic about this pandemic 
and 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 I know that that things are gonna get better, you know. No, I'm gonna get. It's not gonna go backwards. So maybe it, it might take a year or two, but I I think we'll we'll, we'll be back uh, shaking pe 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 people's hands, you know, and slowly go back to yeah. everyone, you know, uh, in the same room. Yeah. You know, well, maybe with less people, but you know. Well, and I look forward to the hugs. Yeah, I well, miss the hugs. I miss the hugs a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Weird to see people you love and you're just going like this. And it was like, <laughs> I know, right? You got to hug the computer, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what is your joy in life? Uh, oh. Oh. He walked bacon butt. Did you say bacon butt? Yeah, that's his last name. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he's not Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's I think that's it. Is, yeah. that, is that good for everyone? Everybody good? Yeah. yeah. Thank you all for coming. And Dory, 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 thank you so much. Thank you, David. It was wonderful meeting you all. Thank you, Dory. Thank you, Dory. Thank you, Dory. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe in a few years, we will be able to shake hands. I might be still wearing gloves just because I don't want to get sick so I don't have to stay home and miss a day of work. Yeah, exactly. But otherwise, it'd be a, it'll be great to see everybody. Yeah, it was, thank you for taking the time to answer all our questions. Oh, my pleasure. And uh, good luck, everyone, and keep doing what you're doing. And uh, uh, enjoy it. You're, it can happen. Mm -hmm.